My name is Andrew. I am a rancher, a marksman, an outdoorsman, and a bladesmith. I've spent most of my life seeking adventure in one way or another, or in one place or another, and I would like to share all of that with you. Hey guys, how are you? We're going to be doing a little bit of a project today, so uh, I'm going to be remaking my batch of ferric chloride. Ferric chloride is an etchant that a lot of knife makers use for bringing out the colors and the variations of the metal in Damascus. So it gives it that uh, that contrasting uh, black to silver tone in the blade. Uh, it sort of helps actually reveal what types of metals are there. So anytime you're working with chemicals, it's important that you have a clean workspace, preferably a little bit cleaner than mine. Uh, but eye protection, uh, gloves, those are very important, especially because today we're going to be working with acids. And we're in a very well-ventilated space. And even though we are in this space, we do want to avoid possibly breathing in any fumes that are created from this process. So, what we're going to start with today is muriatic acid. So muriatic acid is usually used to balance the pH in pools, uh, and you can pick up a gallon of this for about seven bucks. So this container that I have is 24 ounces. So we are going to add 24 ounces of muriatic acid. So what we'll be doing to the muriatic acid is adding a piece of steel wool. Now as that steel wool breaks down in the muriatic acid, it's gonna essentially add iron ions to the muriatic acid, creating what we call ferrous chloride. That's one step away from ferric chloride, but we'll get to that. So as this breaks down in the acid here, uh, which should take a few hours, we'll uh, begin to see reactions like this happen. So we'll be back. Uh, in a few hours. You see here as the acid begins to break down the steel wool, uh, as I said, what we will have is ferrous chloride. So it's really important to note that at this point in time, it's very important not to have any open flames nearby. Because as we break down this iron into the acid, this is actually uh, putting off pure hydrogen gas. So this can actually be explosive. Hey guys, so we are back and I have taken my now ferrous chloride with my completely dissolved steel wool and put it into a larger container. So what we want here is one part ferrous chloride to two parts hydrogen peroxide. It's important that you have the ferrous chloride in your container first. You need to introduce the hydrogen peroxide to the ferrous chloride, not the ferrous chloride to the hydrogen peroxide. And as we do this, what will happen is we will be rapidly oxidizing the iron in this mixture. You can see it turns an orange color here. Now it's not, uh, it's not too dramatic. If you take your hand and feel this, it actually starts to get hot. So that's one of the reactions that will happen. And once, once you have slowly, rapidly oxidized all of the iron in here, you will have ferric chloride and it will actually be back to room temperature. So let's go ahead and continue to add this to the mixture here. What I started with was 24 ounces of muriatic acid. One of these containers here is 32 ounces. So we need approximately one and a half. You can be as precise as you want to be. I'm just trying to get my line to land about here. 
uh, as long as we are roughly one to two parts, we'll be just fine. And I have a little bit over half of a container left in here. You see, uh, as we add more hydrogen peroxide, we see a reaction each and every time. There we go. So should take, oh, maybe another hour or so, just depending on the weather. Today it's about 110 degrees, so all of this is actually happening a lot faster, such as the case with acid after all. Uh, so maybe in about 30 minutes to an hour here, this will be ready uh, and we can start to etch. So because I'm in a workshop here, this is uncovered. Uh, it's important to know that ferric chloride, which is essentially what this is at this point, um, minus the time uh, as it's in the air you can actually begin to rust things in your workshop so now that we've taken the taken the time to put everything in here we want to take the mixture back outside and let it continue to gas off and if i do store it in the workshop it's important to store it covered in order to protect my power tools uh, which we don't want damaged If you're interested in seeing more, or if you'd like to see the knives that I've made, maybe it'll help with my reputation a little bit. What you can do is follow my Instagram, adventure underscore tactics with an X. It's the same as the name on my YouTube account. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, and all that stuff that you're apparently supposed to do on the internet. And I'll see you on the next episode.